Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. In this week, something unexpected happens. Starting off the news this week, a study published in the journal Scientific Data has mapped the southern ocean floor in a detail not reached before. The chart covers 18.5 million square miles of underwater area, and understanding what has been mapped is a crucial base for helping more efficient marine conservation, safer navigation, and also understanding the Earth's geological past. Again though, this really really isn't everything, it's just more than we've previously had. Not only is this study surveying areas and depths that haven't been properly surveyed before, it is also resurveying those that need more modern updates. Very little is known about the detail of Earth's underwater terrain, and work like this is helping, albeit slowly, change that. And now over to Ben, with some interesting stuff about some stuff that is interesting. Thanks Doug. Up next in the news for this week we have the incredible naming of a new kind of prehistoric giraffe relative that had a pachycephalosaur style dome on its head. Named Discocerex shiachu, this animal was found in early Miocene aged rocks in northern China and is known from a holotype specimen, which includes a brain case and the first four neck vertebrae, as well as part of the skull from a juvenile individual and two tooth rows from two other individuals. The anatomy of this animal is absolutely amazing, with the ancient giraffe possessing a strange disc shaped headgear right above its brain case, as well as having what has been reported as the most complicated head neck joints in known mammals. The disc structure on its head indicates that a keratinous tissue would have covered it in life, with the integument forming a dome shape as new layers of keratinous tissue were added as the animal grew. This, along with the fact that the neurocranium had very thick bony walls and that the neck bones had reinforced centra, indicates that Discocerex was specialised for headbutting behaviour, with finite element analysis supporting this idea and showing that the animal had the most optimised headbutting adaptations known in vertebrate evolution. Since Discocerex lived long before the modern giraffe genus appeared, it clearly has some fascinating implications for giraffe neck evolution, showing that these mammals were very diverse in their morphology, with the researchers also suggesting that the neck in combat employed by giraffes today was likely the primary selection pressure eventually resulting in their elongated necks. Up next is the remarkable discovery of the first ovum in ovo egg pathology from a non-bird dinosaur. Ovum in ovo eggs are caused when one egg forms within another, an abnormality that's been seen in modern birds but never in non-bird dinosaurs or other reptiles, until now. A titanosaurid dinosaur egg from the late Cretaceous of central India has been found that preserves such a pathology, indicating that the anatomy of sauropod oviducts must have been similar to that seen in birds, a fascinating discovery. And finally for this week, there's been the amazing description of the first belly button found in a dinosaur fossil. The specimen in question is the exceptionally well-preserved Cetacosaurus fossil that's already allowed paleontologists to reconstruct its coloration and the anatomy of its cloaca, so this really is the specimen that keeps on giving. The specimen preserves a long structure along the midline of the abdomen that's visible under laser-stimulated fluorescence, which is interpreted as the umbilicus, a scar found in many egg-laying amniotes that's the equivalent to the belly button in mammals. The umbilicus represents the attachment point of the embryo to the extra embryonic membranes within the egg, and although it's found in all living birds and reptiles, it's usually a temporary structure that's lost not too long after hatching. Some kinds of lizards and crocodilians, however, retain them until sexual maturity, and considering that this Cetacosaurus individual was close to the stage when it died, it would seem that this dinosaur species at least also retains the umbilicus until they grew quite old. The study notes though, that the presence of an umbilicus later in life is a very variable feature among living reptilian lineages, and so it can't be said for certain if other kinds of non-bird dinosaurs kept this structure. It really is an amazing find, and continues to show just how much this one remarkable specimen has revealed about the biology of dinosaurs. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you Ben. Well that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science, I do hope you enjoyed and we'll see you on Sunday.